From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. So I would come in with some intriguing good news. It's also uh, it's also a story that takes place in one of the most enigmatic environments known to this species, the human mind. We know about as much of the about the human mind as we do about things like the bottom of the ocean, which is to say, not very much at all. Like so so very little that you should be worried by that fact. Because the stuff the species has figured out has generally been used to manipulate groups of people rather than to better uh, the, the quality of life for humanity or the quality of life for non-humans on this planet. Uh, so here's some good news about the brain. Uh, psychedelic mushrooms. You know, fellow conspiracy realists, if you're a longtime listener, you know, we love talking about this stuff. We love talking about the edges of inner and outer space. And psychedelics can take you on those journeys. Uh, they're not to be played with recreationally. This is, of course, I'm sure legal requires me to say this is not stuff they don't want you to know saying, oh, go do mushrooms. They're cool as shit. They are very cool, but we're not legally telling you to do them. Though if someone pulled a clip of what you just said out of context... <laughs> God help you. No, it's true. Uh, and there's we're in living in an interesting age too, right, Ben? Where there's tons of new research. We're always finding out new things and new uh, properties of these substances that lend themselves to uh, some positive things, whether it be in mental health or, dare we say, even like some weird form of evolution. That's, you know, that's a story that it, we've talked about this a little bit in the past, uh, especially the idea that there may be some role psychedelics played in the um, the rise of what, what became religion, right? Mm -hmm. The precedence for that abstract sort of belief system. But the research, the research into the hazards and the potential advantages of psychedelic use has been stymied for generations in in the recent era because they were associated with hard drugs things like crack cocaine heroin powerful opioids but now that we're reaching a new era of research for psychedelics the species is learning some fascinating things and a lot of this research uh, comes about due to tragic situations due to uh PTSD survivors from recent conflicts. And they're trying to say, you know, what, what can we do to alleviate these, these conditions that are, are preventing us from living our lives to the fullest extent? And research shows that's where so-called magic mushrooms can, can play a role. Here, here's why this is news. A recent study found that psychedelics psilocybin specifically doesn't just help address feelings of um you know mental illness or feelings of anxiety ptsd depression so on they found that it actually physically changes the structure of the mammalian brain uh, in a very recent study that was published uh july 5th 2021, researchers found that dosing mice specifically can create what they call neural adaptations. A single dose of psilocybin leads to a 10% increase in both the size and density of what are called dendritic spines. And we'd need a whole episode to get into the nuts and bolts of this, but the important part is that first, it's physically changing the brain. It's helping the brain recover in ways that are scientifically unprecedented for this kind of application. This means, and again, this is not a recommendation, your mileage may vary, but this means that if hypothetically you ingested these substances, they could heal damaged brain cells 
in people suffering from depression. The second thing is that this is a lasting solution. Uh, the study, which is again published in Neuron, finds that this, what they call structural remodeling, occurs within 24 hours. So it happens very quickly after you take a dose of a hallucinogen. And then when the researchers went back and checked on their test subjects a month later, they found those changes remained the same. And this this is leading, the, this came from researchers in California, but it's quite possibly leading a revolution in this era of research. You know, it turns out that maybe those, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs ads, you know, with the egg and the frying pan, it turns out that maybe they were onto something, but in some cases, it might be a good thing. This is stimulating the growth of new branches and connections between brain cells. That means it might not just help address things like chronic depression, which is incredibly dangerous, but it could help ameliorate the symptoms of addiction. And with that in mind, like, so people have suspected this for a while, but have, have you guys ever... Have you guys heard of research like this? I, w I was surprised. I thought maybe it was just a pop sci headline, but it's legit. I, I haven't. And I, I honestly never even really associated the idea of things like depression or anxiety as being because of brain damage. Exactly. I don't know that's not exactly what's being said, but I think that's in and of itself is a fascinating takeaway to consider how little we do know about, about the brain and how <laughs> magical these uh, things are, for lack of a better term. I mean, that's what they're called for a reason, because they definitely do things that nothing else can. And I'm interested to see where this goes, Ben. Well, I'll give you my unscientific remembrance of how this has been talked about with me in the past, just in, in conversation. Um, I, I believe the concept was when someone is maybe stuck in a rut mentally when it comes to anything, uh, but specifically if you're in, um, if you're feeling depressed and maybe there's a, there's a track that kind of never stops playing in your mind, that, sure. like mm -hmm. you're just kind of stuck in that one place. If this substance really can, um, uh, as you said, enhance those neuroreceptors change them a bit and allow you to break some of the calcification that's going on there, even though the calcium is not involved, uh, sure. <laughs> metaphorically, I, I, that's the way it's been spoken to me. Like it'll help you rewire your brain, but it was always in an abstract kind of way, not in, at least from what I remember reading, never shown to actually physically change those uh, those things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me, let me add like, so this is, this is something that will be of interest, I think to, to a lot of us listening along at home or in your job or in Iceland on your day off. Congratulations again. Uh, yeah. Depression can, types of depression can affect your brain physically in detrimental ways. According to uh, the lead researcher of this latest study, a uh, Dr. David Olson, he says, quote, one of the hallmarks of depression is that the neurites in the prefrontal cortex, a key brain region that regulates emotion, mood, and anxiety, these, those neurites tend to shrivel up mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, the brain functions in many ways like a muscle. And then, you know, you can see some of these changes in cases of addiction, PTSD, and so on. So we... It, it's astonishing to realize. We talked about this a little bit in an episode we did a long time ago, Mind Over Matter, right? Like the, um, you know, you see the studies of certain monks uh, or a holy, holy ascetics, right? And they, they have meditated so long that the parts of their brain that are um, associated with empathy and compassion are physically larger and denser than those of the average person. And if that sounds like too much of a woo-woo explanation, folks, then consider also the famous black cab drivers of the United Kingdom. They have to take this monstrous test called the knowledge, and it, it, it teaches them how to, basically, they memorize London in various what if scenarios and they can't they can't use a gps or anything and after those folks have been driving for a number of years the parts of their brain i believe the hippocampus and a couple of other spots the part associated with memory and spatial reasoning is also physically larger your thoughts shape the organ that well your brain calls itself i guess is the best way to put it uh, and so with this in mind you know we have to wonder are we 
are we better served uh, in the modern world? Uh, like, how much does the the stigma of this sort of experimentation? How how much good does it actually do? Right, as we record, the majority of psychedelic substances uh, that people would commonly associate with the phrase psychedelic, they're illegal in the U.S. If you are someone suffering from depression or PTSD, or maybe say you're a veteran, or you've survived some horrific experience or trauma, and then you get busted by the police, and you've been doing LSD or magic mushrooms, you're in possession of, of something like that, then odds are the authorities are not going to say, hey, you know, I read a pretty good article in Cell earlier that said this might be a great way to help you get you back on the track to mental wellness. Apologies, sir. Please enjoy your rave. Man, no. keep, keep increasing the density of those dendrites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they won't because it's a, you know, like, because in the eyes of the law, you are committing a crime. Um, and, you know, of course, the legislation always lags behind the technology. But I know, guys, we've got a lot of people in the audience today who have probably had a similar experience. And it's one that, you know, maybe felt like it was relegated to the realm of anecdote forever. But now science is backing you up if you've had an experience like this. I think that's, I think that's profound. Um, I also don't think it's the same thing as saying, hey, everybody. If you're ever feeling a little bit down, go trip. That's terrible advice. Uh, scene and setting play a huge role in this. The study is well worth the the read if you have the time. It is a little bit dry because it's you know it it, it is an academic journal, uh, but the revelations are fascinating and worthwhile. Note, of course, important caveat: this was done on mice, mm. so there there hasn't been an experiment of this sort replicated on human beings or other animals, but it would be interesting, uh, especially, you know, I'm just spitballing here, especially if we give it to some octopuses, maybe some corvids. No. Nope. See what happens. No. Well, well like uh, the, the octopus certainly enjoy doing MDMA. There was a, there was an observation on that. You heard about that, right? I did not. <laughs> Noel, did you hear about that one? No, no, I haven't yet. No, extapuses. Oh, God. <laughs> well, we'll we'll keep it close here because we're gonna we're gonna wrap. But I do want everybody to uh, check this out. This is a legit story too. You can find it in outlets like NPR and so on. When there was a study that gave octopuses ecstasy, and ecstasy in human beings is known for encouraging like cuddly warm feelings and people feel extra lovey-dovey etc cetera, etc cetera. everything's going to be okay uh they found that when you give this to an octopus a creature that's almost completely antisocial for most of its life except when it's mating uh what they found is that they do a 180 they do an emotional and social emotional social uh 180 they want to hang out with other octopuses they even like hug them you know, just like they're both in their hallucinogenic cups at a party. And this is profound because up until this discovery, scientists who had to, uh, who studied octopuses usually had to put them in separate, separate housing, right? Mm -hmm. Separate aquariums or whatever, so that they wouldn't kill or eat each other. So they went from like a Mad Max. Highlander, there can only be one cannibalism situation to being like, oh my God, the colors, right? <laughs> and they can communicate through chromatophores. Yeah. I don't know. It's a brave new world. So what happened when they played the octopuses MGMT? Like, how did they <laughs> react to that? Uh, that? That is an excellent question, Matt. I believe the research is still out, though it does appear. Um, I, I Don't quote me on this. I'll, I'll dig into it. But there is some... I want to say there was compelling research about octopuses' musical preference. Hmm. I can't remember what that is. I can't remember what that is. So it's probably the electric listen. feel. Uh, that's probably what it is. It probably is. Uh, but I wanted to give like this is some good news forward with the future. Uh, scientists who are working around the clock are often doing thankless jobs, but they're doing important work. Would love to hear your experiences with psychedelic mushrooms. Does this news in particular surprise you? Were you expecting 
experts to say that this stuff is literally healing your brain on a physical level, let us know. one eight three three std wytk You can also email us, conspiracy at iheartradio.com. We're going to pause for a word from our sponsor, who may already be in your dreams, and we'll return with more strange news. 